Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always I am your host Brett Murphy and for today's video I have a brand new ranking for you all and I am going to be ranking all four of the Lethal Weapon movies. So Lethal Weapon is easily one of the most well-known and beloved action movie franchises of all time and I'm a little ashamed that it's taken me this long to get around to ranking them. So as it currently stands this series contains four movies with a fifth one reported on the way with the passing of Richard Donner we now have Mel Gibson in the director's chair we haven't heard too much on this in quite some time so I'm really not sure if it's ever gonna come or not but if it does you know you'll get an updated ranking from me however today we're only going to be focusing on the four that we currently have before I hop into the actual ranking itself I just wanted to let you all know that I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my ranking videos there are already well over 100 videos on that playlist so if rankings are your thing then check that out and I guarantee you'll find something you like. And so without further ado, let's hop right into things. Number 4. Lethal Weapon 3 I must admit that this one was a bit of a letdown for me. I went into it knowing that the reviews were all saying pretty much the same thing, that this one was fairly mediocre. But I watched all of these movies in a row, and I really, really dug the first two, so I was hoping that maybe I would like this one. And though I must admit that, yes, I do still like it, because it does manage to get a lot of things right. However, it also gets many other things just so painfully wrong. For starters, this is definitely the weakest villain of this franchise, which is saying something, because I feel this franchise in its entirety lacks an even remotely memorable, let alone iconic villain. The villains across the board just kind of suck, and this one is the worst of them. Joe Pesci's Leo Getz gets on my nerves so much in this movie, at least in the second one, which I will of course touch on later. There are some scenes where he does make me chuckle, but he did nothing but annoy me in this one. I really just couldn't stand his character here. There are also some story decisions that I found to be a little puzzling, and I really felt that Rene Rousseau added nothing meaningful to the mix either. Thankfully, Gibson and Glover swoop in to save the day once again just by plainly and simply doing their thing. I love these two together, and they are the main reason that this franchise works as well as it does. Much of the comedy works. I really did love the scene on the boat in this one, I must say, it really is one of my favorites in the entire series. The last couple of action set pieces too were fantastic. But all in all, this one is probably the weakest in the franchise by a fair margin. Number 3. Lethal Weapon 4 this may be a bit of an unpopular opinion, but I found this one to be a decent step up from the third, because I actually enjoyed this one much, much more. Though I must say that this one, once again, is severely lacking in the villain department, delivering yet another uninteresting and forgettable villain. At least it is Jet Li, because he is allowed to just do his Jet Li thing alongside an immaculate stunt team, because this one has by far far the best hand-to-hand -hand combat of all four movies. This also happens to be the only of the three movies that he's in that I actually liked Joe Pesci's Leo Getz. He has some fairly solid and memorable scenes that really did work for me. Rene Rousseau I found to be a bit better too, but Chris Rock really did nothing for me. I must address too that there is some minor racism here and there throughout this movie that sort of played off as comedy that hasn't aged all that well, but I sort of chalk that up to it being a bit of a product of its time when that stuff was a little more acceptable. Some of the story beats didn't quite land for me, but some of them did, especially this movie's themes like aging and the responsibility of becoming a parent and what it means to be a parent and kind of let your children go off on their own journeys. I think they really nailed all of these and and many many more themes honestly in a light-hearted but effective way. I think I'd go as far as to say that this movie is actually on par with the next entry on this list. And to put a nice little cherry on top of all of this, I think that this movie delivered a perfect ending. Which truthfully kind of makes me not want a fifth movie at all because this one was just such a satisfying conclusion. Number 2. Lethal Weapon 2 
I think this one falls just ever so slightly short of the original. In fact, I think there are elements in here that are actually done better than they are in the first movie. For instance, the villains are slightly improved upon. Though once again, the villains have been such a consistent problem across all four movies if you ask me. I liked the increased focus on the rest of the police force and there are some huge, awesome standout action set pieces. Glover and Gibson unsurprisingly continue to work their magic together. However, some elements of this movie felt a little bit weaker too. I did not at all like the very weird personal twist between Riggs and one of the villains in this movie. It just felt so unnecessary and so out of left field and just really forced. The whole diplomatic immunity thing to me is unbelievably dumb. I think it probably did exist to a certain degree, like maybe they couldn't have been brought in without any sufficient evidence and things like that, but these guys are going around just doing the most blatantly illegal shit. I mean, they are straight up like murdering police officers and then just going diplomatic immunity and our characters can't do anything about it. Like, no, that is so flimsy and so stupid if you ask me. So that element really did not work here. However, I must say the diplomatic immunity thing does pay off a little bit when we get the iconic line of it's just been revoked. That is awesome. That is one of the best one-liners in movie history. This was our introduction to Joe Pesci's Leo Getz, and it was a bit of a mixed bag for me. Some of his scenes worked and made me laugh, but other times I did find him to be a bit too much and a little bit annoying. I really do wish that he was reduced to a bit more of a supporting role and didn't play such a key part in the story. All in all, though, this was absolutely a solid and worthy sequel. Number 1. Lethal Weapon Plain and simple, I love this movie. Such a fun movie that takes the time to address some deeper issues too, like age, loss, mental health, and even suicide. Glover and Gibson are instantly iconic and by far one of the greatest duos in movie history. Their chemistry is just off the charts and they balance each other out perfectly. Seriously, I don't know who thought of it, but these two together is flawless. Pair that with some kick-ass action, some genuinely funny jokes, a great score that is consistent across all four movies, which is something I forgot to mention, and a ton of heart and we have ourselves a major winner. Yes, the villain definitely could have been stronger, and the whole final fist fight in the front yard threw me off for sure, but aside from those few things, this movie is just simply one hell of a time. So that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my ranking. While you're at it, don't forget to let me know how you would rank all four of the Lethal Weapon movies. If you're a movie lover whatsoever, then my channel is the place to be for you, be it rankings like this one, top tens, verses, videos, tier videos, I have that all in so much more and we are currently nearing if not over 700 videos already on the channel for you to enjoy. So if you enjoyed this particular video then be sure to hit that thumbs up button and if any of that sounds like it's right for you and you want to see more from me then smash that subscribe button right now. While you're at it don't forget to ring that little bell icon that way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always stay safe thank you so much for watching and that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you, and while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.